So hello everyone and welcome to an Agents Together Zoom interview. Now it's Mental Health Awareness Week and the theme is Loma. And I am joined by the amazing Sally Desperate who's going to talk to us from a professional point of view about mental health. She's a mental health first aider, she's qualified, she's an inspirational coach, speaker um, and instructor. And the, the topic we're talking to you about today is quality of relationships. So Sally, please talk to us how the quality of relationships sort of goes with loneliness. Sure, absolutely. Thank you. And thank you for inviting me to have this conversation today. Thank I'm you. absolutely excited to be with you. So loneliness, it is the theme of this week's Mental Health Awareness Week. And I think it's been a, a real problem for a lot of people over the last couple of years. And it might start to be looking a little bit different now as we're starting to re-engage with kind of day-to-day -day life and our version of reality has started to change and there's lots, been lots of discussion about social isolation over the last couple of years as well and I suppose those two things almost go hand in hand social isolation and loneliness there's a strong relationship between both of those things but they but they aren't one and the same so yeah. when it comes to the quality of relationships this is really important when it comes to loneliness because somebody might not be socially isolated they might be surrounded by people in their workplace they might be in a family of five so they're not socially isolated where they can count potentially the number of people they've interacted with during the day but the quality of those relationships can really make a difference to how lonely or not lonely somebody feels so loneliness is very subjective it's a deeply personal thing you might be surrounded by lots of people but not feel understood you might not feel like you can speak up and share your thoughts and talk about how you're really feeling and so somebody might feel lonely even though they are surrounded by people so we might so have lots though, of so, so, so even though our estate agents are in a really buzzing office, talking to their colleagues, their managers, talking to amazing vendors, tenants, landlords all yeah. the time, you know, 8.30 till 6, well, they can still yeah. feel that way. Yeah, absolutely. So the quantity of relationships might not be an issue. We might have loads and loads and loads of relationships, but it's the nature of those relationships. How deep are those relationships? And again, that's very personal. So when it comes to loneliness, as I mentioned it's subjective. It's usually where we feel that there's a gap between the quality and maybe the quantity of those relationships. And that gap is not meeting the need that we need to feel fulfilled. Somebody might live in social isolation on their own and not mm. feel lonely. They feel quite happy and content, um, yeah. but they might have quality relationships in places in their life that help them to not feel lonely. That's a, that's a really good point. And especially for those people that are still working from home, uh, you know, they might be you know, quite content doing that. But at the same time, they might be feeling lonely and it's checking the quality of those relationships yeah. Are, are they just a job? So it's keeping you busy, but at the same time, you're also feeling quite lonely. And it's important, yeah. you know, how to recognise that. So if I, if I was that person, then how would I recognise that I'm feeling that loneliness? Yeah, so there is there's so much research out there about loneliness. And I think when it comes to loneliness, people can find it hard to talk about. So in terms of spotting those signs in ourselves, maybe spotting signs in others, actually we might notice things like not being able to sleep properly. So it can really start interrupting our sleep. Yeah. Um, we, we might feel that stress more quickly and more easily as well. If we're feeling lonely, those stress levels are likely to be heightened. So we might be reacting in situations that we wouldn't ordinarily react in. So those emotions might very much be on the surface. We might find ourselves being more, more, I don't know which way or less productive more unproductive or less productive actually yeah. so you know we might be less effective at completing our tasks we might find it difficult to work in teams when we find when we're feeling that loneliness we might find it difficult to form those relationships because if we're feeling lonely it can feel quite difficult to build then those relationships there might be a nervousness there might be anxiety around that and we can get stuck on the negatives as well. So we might be annoyed by the small things. We might dwell on bad experiences much more readily if we're feeling lonely. And actually, generally speaking, if we're losing sleep, if we're feeling the stress more, actually, we might be picking up more coughs and colds and, you know, headaches and things like that. So we can definitely feel physical symptoms of all of this um, too. And yeah. I would say other behaviours, you know, you might be spotting, looking out for either in yourself or others 
is around you know activities and interests you know hobbies activities and Mm -hmm. interests are really important and we might be able to socially connect through those but somebody might have those hobbies and interests that are kind of things that don't involve other people so it could be you know knitting or listening to music if somebody's completely distracted by those and almost becoming overly attached possessive obsessive you know that could be a sign that maybe we are feeling lonely maybe we're trying to fill a a, a void or something like that somebody may appear on the surface to be very materialistic they're spending lots of money on stuff that they don't really need because they're trying to fill a need or something like that so there's potentially all sorts of different signs we could be picking up on um in terms of that loneliness yeah there's lots there's lots of signs isn't it and i I, you know i think it's good that there's lots of signs because for me you know relationships is something that I'm super passionate about so it's Mm. important for me to be able to identify with myself if I'm feeling that way but also with the people I talk to if they're giving me any of these signs or signals I could be now thinking actually that's a sign maybe I should check in with them more often if they are feeling that way so that's really beneficial thank you for explaining that no worries at all and I think it's so important to check in with ourselves you know I have my daily maintenance toolkit what do I need every day to to make sure I'm feeling energized I'm feeling well and one of those things is I've got to talk to somebody outside of my household I live with my partner and I get to speak to him every day but who else can I speak to or touch base with whether that's on WhatsApp and if I've not done that by the end of the day I kind of feel like oh I don't feel like my energy's there what have I not done right I've drunk water I've eaten meals I've been outside I've done some physical activity what one thing haven't I done and if I haven't socially connected I need to make sure that I need to do that for for myself so having kind of like a daily maintenance toolkit being able to check in with yourself have I done my six basic things today that can really support our sense of well-being I, I, yeah that's brilliant well you know if you're working from home and you know you've got that checklist have I done this to make sure I'm okay today but for our people that are you know are watching that are working in an estate agency office what are you doing on your lunch hour you, you know if you're still feeling alone in that work environment what can you do in your time that you can control to make that difference can you meet a mate for a coffee or can you know can you go for lunch so I think you know what you said there of having that checklist everyone can do you're completely in control no one can take it away from you uh, so yeah I really like that thank you for putting that forward great no loving the conversation so far thanks Sam my absolute pleasure so what else can you tell us about the relationship uh, well the quality of relationships yeah so I think uh, when it comes to the quality of relationships again it's that kind of, kind of that deep relationship and I know we had a conversation the other day about social media as well yeah and how we can have so many social connections you know I know people have got 800 900 you know friends on Facebook or something like this Um, but the question is how connected do we feel with people and you know time and time again I find it so interesting I might see somebody on the high street you know from 10 years back you know could it be even 20 years ago no acknowledgement and the next day you kind of get a a Facebook friend request and I'm kind of like you didn't even smile at me you actually physically looked away from me and now you're yeah. adding me to Facebook decline no so you might have all, all again this quantity of so-called relationships on social media and things like that but the quality you know do we feel that we can speak up do we feel that we can really talk about our feelings with people can we be honest can we be our true selves mm. can we really confide in people you know the quality of relationships I've never been a person with loads and loads and loads and loads of friends I've always been able to count my friends on my hand but they are close and I know yeah, I can small circle them. yeah I can go to them in that time of need whereas I know other people they might have had hundreds of friends but actually well who does help me out who do I go to actually I don't feel like I can go to anyone because they're much more shallow relationships and there's nothing wrong with shallower relationships nothing wrong with those at all but you know in that time of need we we do need other people we need to connect with humans it's all part of being human it's all part of our you know historical psychology and physiology we need the human connectedness uh, for positive mental and physical well-being Uh, so the quality of our relationships is is absolutely vital so important yeah i completely agree And well, I've got so much out of this session. I think the main things for me is that regardless of your work environment, whether you're in that busy office, especially with how busy things are at the moment, you are still okay to feel lonely. But on the back of that, there is so much you can do to help support yourself, but also checking with other colleagues. So thank you for sharing, Sally. And I look forward to our next chat on uh, social media. Thanks, Sam. Thank you very much.